Hello and welcome to another edition of On Topic. I'm John Testa and we're here today at the Lincoln Depot uh, historic site here in the city of Peekskill, right along the railroad tracks, just where Central Avenue meets Water Street here in the city of Peekskill. And we're at this site because every year the Lincoln Society in Peekskill sponsors a, a series of events to commemorate the day when President-elect Lincoln stopped here in 1861 to uh, speak to the community uh, and go along his trip on his inaugurational uh, journey from Springfield all the way to Washington, D.C. And this year is a very special year because it's not only the 105th uh, time that the Lincoln Society has made this event possible, but it's also a national event where it's the 200th anniversary of the birth of President a Abraham Lincoln. So it's a very special year and it was some very special events took place this year to commemorate that all across the country. And in Peekskill we were able to have that event have extra meeting as well because we had special events here. Uh, this year we had the parade that usually leads up to the ceremony starting at the present uh, depot which is just down Railroad Avenue from here, the actual acting depot right now that people use on a daily basis to commute. Uh, that was the starting point to the little procession that took place and came all the way down here to Water Street to the Lincoln Depot. And you see behind me uh, the statue that commemorates that day in 1861 when President Lake Lincoln came here and Richard Moslowski, the artist, uh, we were able to have him commissioned to create this statue uh, depicting that, that day and uh, we installed it in 2007 and here we are on the site that we're able to obtain and start to restore and if you came down here and looked at the building and had really seen this building over the years you would see that it's restored on the exterior and there's a, a organization called the Lincoln Depot Foundation in charge of this property and in, in control of uh, restoration of the interior and this building will be eventually a museum. This will be a historic site and it will be a very uh, sought after place uh, as it is even uh, in the condition that it is in today. And the procession came down uh, from uh, the railroad station and entered this property and then uh, the morning events took place where we had um, the Lincoln Society members here. We had other members of different re Civil War reenactment groups and we had uh, Michael Grice, who was a retired teacher from Peekskill High School, a social studies teacher who has been uh, recreating Abraham Lincoln's speech uh, for over a decade now here in the city of Peekskill. And he did a wonderful job again, and uh, it was great to have him here to do that. And we had just a wonderful uh, morning here in the city of Peekskill. And then in the evening, um, we had the annual dinner dance. And the special event this year was the speaker that we had uh, at the event, which uh, went over very well, uh, Harold Holzer. Harold is a uh, well-known Lincoln scholar, author. Uh, anytime you see a, a documentary uh, on Lincoln, you will see Harold there with his commentary. And uh, it was just a wonderful day. Uh, we'll show you that, that speech that Harold had um, at, at the dinner. We were only able to show, because of the time restraints of our show, we were only able to show the section of his speech where he talks about Peekskill. But on our website, ontopicwithjt.com, you can go there and see the full speech. It was a half hour in length by itself, and uh, it was so important and uh, enjoyable that we captured that as a separate show that you can see only on the website. So if you go to ontopicwithjt.com, you'll be able to not only see the show we're, we're bringing you today, but also uh, his speech in full. So it was a great day. We were able to speak with Mr. Lincoln, uh, Mike Greist himself. We were able to speak with Patrick Garvey, who is a member of the Lincoln Depot Foundation. And we were able to just show the events and, and go through the actual reenactment of Lincoln's speech. So uh, you'll see all that here on the show today. And hopefully you'll get a better understanding, if you have not ever seen the events before, of what the Lincoln Society and Peekskill tries to portray each and every year and why uh, it's such an important event for the citizens here in Peekskill. So enjoy the show and enjoy all the events that, that we'll be showing uh, during the course of the program, and then we'll, uh, we'll see you later in the show. This is the uh, second part of the morning program. Uh, we welcome you all to Lincoln Society's 105th commemoration of President-elect Lincoln's appearance and speaking at this very location where we're standing right now. Uh, this is a primary historic location for the city of Peekskill, 
and for the surrounding region. Because on this very location, 148 years ago, 1,000 estimated 1,500 area people uh, were standing in this location to greet and listen to uh, President-elect Abraham Lincoln. Uh, this year also marks the 200th anniversary of Abraham Lincoln's birth, and this event and and the and the evening event uh, at the Hollowbrook uh, Restaurant is uh, officially sponsored by the Abraham Lincoln Bicentennial Commission. And our speaker this evening, Harold Holzer, is one of the co-chairmen of this federally organized uh, commission to sponsor such activities, uh, taking an interest in the uh, former president all around the country uh, for this entire year of 2009. Uh, before we begin with uh, various aspects of the program, I would like to introduce Reverend Lacey of the Mount Olivet Baptist Church, if he would please uh, 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 lead us in an invocation. Shall we pray? Eternal God, we thank you for this day that you have given us, a day full of promise and possibility. We thank you even for uh, the memory of a great man who said, a house divided against itself shall not stand. Therefore, may we be united in this memory and work together as one community of blacks and whites, males and females working together to make a more perfect union. As we commemorate this great man, Abraham Lincoln, let us see the Lincoln in each one of us. Hear our prayer, O oh Lord. Amen. Very good. Thank you. Let us see the Lincoln in each one of us. Now that's a memorable phrase. So I would like to welcome, uh, first of all, the West Point Honor Guard here from West Point from the United States Military Academy. Next to them, we have our good friends from Connecticut, the 11th Connecticut Volunteer Infantry Regiment. The boys in the red and blue are from the Poughkeepsie area of New York, and that's the 5th New York Durye Zouaves. Thank you, welcome. And then to my left, we have Troop 164, Boy Scout Troop 164 from Yorktown Heights, New York. As well as on my far left, the Sons of Union veterans from the Department of New York. William Nelson is here with us today, and he will introduce President-elect Lincoln. My dear friends and neighbors, I had the honor and privilege of serving with Mr. Lincoln in the 30th Congress of the United States from 1847 to 1849, representing the County of Westchester. And now I am requested in behalf of the corporation and citizens of the, this village to express to you, Mr. Lincoln, their gratification in meeting you at this time and welcoming you to our village as the president-elect of this great republic. This is not the time nor the occasion for making a formal address to you, but permit me to observe that we, in common with your fellow citizens, generally appreciate the difficulties which probably will attend you in the discharge of the important duties about to devolve upon you as the chief magistrate of this nation. We have, however, full confidence in the soundness of your head and the purity of your heart, and that with the aid of that divine providence which you have invoked, you will be equal to every emergency which may arise in this critical condition of the nation. You have our hopes and prayers that your administration will prove as prosperous and happy to our beloved country and as honorable to yourself as the difficulties and dangers which now threaten you are great. Associated as we have been in the councils of this nation, I need not assure you of my pleasure in thus meeting you again 
and bearing to you this message from my neighbors and friends. Welcome to Peekskill, Mr. Lincoln. I have but a moment to stand before you to listen to your greetings and return your greetings. I thank you for this reception and for the pleasant manner in which it has been extended to me. I will say in a single sentence in regard to the difficulties which lie before me and our beloved country, if I can only be sustained as generously and unanimously as the demonstrations I have witnessed indicate I shall be, I shall not fail, but without your sustaining hands. Neither I nor any other man can hope to surmount these difficulties. I trust that in the course I shall pursue, I will be sustained not only by the party that elected me, but by the patriotic people of the whole country. Thank you. I'm here now with Patrick Garvey, who is the chairman of the board for the Lincoln uh, Depot Foundation. Pat, thanks for being with us today. Uh, it's a great day, and um, the foundation has been working right along to do their part to restore this building and make this plaza a historic site. So what updates can you give us? Well, we've had a couple of uh, public interactions with uh, various aspects of the community, and uh, there's, I think, a pretty good consensus emerging about how we ought to approach this. And uh, it should be very exciting. We were just talking a little while ago with John Curran here about the rail, right. the existing rail and the possibility of having a vintage railroad car here and even finding the baggage car right. that uh, Lincoln is portrayed in here behind me. So I think there's a lot of, interesting, a lot of interest in the site. Good turnout this morning. And uh, I think uh, it'll, be a, it'll be a terrific place once we get it finished. Now, we've been able to get quite a bit of restoration done on the building. There's still a little bit to do on the, other, on the western side of the exterior, but most of what the foundation will be concentrating on is the interior and uh, uh, restoring that and getting that into a museum-quality site where we can actually start having uh, artifacts, that we, which we've been able to uh, obtain a few and develop it into a real historic destination place. Absolutely. And the other thing that just strikes me, uh, we were commenting on one of the Zouave units that were here, of course, that came out of the fire tradition. One of the, one of the interesting parts about this whole thing is it, it can also serve as a museum for the historic companies that served in the, on the, that, that morphed into military organizations and went off to war as Zouaves. But on top of that, we've got, you know, old fire engines, historic fire engines. We've got a, a new plow that we right. just got. Of course, this was a big industrial area during the 1860s when all of this was going on. Pixie was manufacturing uh, plows and, and uh, stoves at the time. So all of that we're going to try to capture as part of this uh, site. But there's a poignant part of this, too. Uh, we were alluding here earlier to uh, some of the casualties uh, in this incredible war, 600,000 dead, 400,000 wounded. A stunning and, and uh, a good many from this area. And there's, a, there's one story that we're going to pick up on. It's a father waiting at this depot for the, to receive the remains of his son coming back from war. And, of course, there's a, it's a beautiful uh, uh, thing on HBO that gets into how we handle it today. But it's a, this is a great connection to uh, the site, too, and very relevant to the situation we find ourselves in. We have a lot ahead of us, but we're going to make sure that this, this site is, is uh, second to none around this area. Absolutely. And Thank thanks you for your much. leadership on Thank this you. one. I know it was very helpful yeah. to get it started. Christ, who does such an exceptional job every year uh, recreating the Lincoln speech and, and looking more and more like Lincoln every year. Mike? <laughs> well, thank you, John. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. Uh, how does it feel, really, to be here, especially on this, uh, this year with the 200th anniversary? How do, how do you feel standing up there and addressing the crowd and, and, and reenacting that speech? Truthfully, I feel small. I, I, I feel I'm not really up to the task. It's, it's such an honor to be here, really. Because Lincoln, the more you read, the more you research him, the greater that man is. And it's, uh, I'm just honored that I'm allowed to do that here in Pixel. You do a great job, and again, thank you for doing it, and uh, we look forward to it every year. Well, thank, thank you, John. I appreciate you. it. Well, we're here tonight at the Lincoln Society's dinner, and I had the distinct honor and pleasure to be able to speak with Harold Holzer, who is the preeminent Lincoln scholar in the United States. 
He's also the co-chairman of the Lincoln Bicentennial Commission this year, and he's also our featured speaker tonight, so we're, we're in for a real treat. Mr. Holzer, thank you very much for spending a few minutes. Uh, always great to be here. It's my second trip in 10 years, so if I hang on long enough, I might come back every 10 years. <laughs> well, I know this has been a very busy year for you, the 200th yeah. anniversary. We're winding down the month of February, which obviously is a big month, but you're not slowing down. I looked on your website. You still have a lot to go. I know. I have Bard College, which is not too far from here. And um, actually, I'm going down to the National Cathedral a week from this date that we're here okay. now, March 8th, for a concert. And Sam Waterson is going to narrate oh, the Lincoln portrait. And I don't even know where I'm going to <laughs> L.A. and <laughs> Illinois College with Richard Dreyfus at the end of March. Boy. Yeah, it's busy. Yeah, usually this it's is, just February, but now it's this year the 200th. But. Well, the most interesting thing maybe is that, I mean, I haven't been to Europe for years, but this year um, there's a Lincoln conference at Oxford University, and we're going to go and uh, give a talk on Lincoln and his, his international image. Wow. At that's Oxford, exciting. which is exciting. That's going to be exciting. And there's been a, a couple new documentaries this year, and whenever there's a documentary regarding Lincoln, you're always uh, on it. You're always part of the commentary, and how was that this year? There, there, I, I tell you, I did them so spread apart that it was sort of a shock to see them all on in one week, right, like right, day right. after day. I kept my 93-year-old mother busy, since she's my biggest fan, oh, yeah. watching them all. But yeah, two PBS, one National Geo, and one History Channel, so it's interesting. Television has a very big impact on people, and if you, Maybe it's the only time in my life where people have come up to me and said, I saw you on television. And with so the it's HD, been exciting. Yeah, and with the HD, you get the pictures and you get the images so clear, and it's really a, a, a whole different experience now. Well, one of those shows was called Stealing Lincoln's Body, and they actually enhanced photographs of Lincoln right. so that they came very vividly yes. to life, and some of them moved. So yeah. it was HD TV plus enhancements in the studio and animation. It was unbelievable. I think I should first thank you once again. When I was mayor, you were gracious enough to come about a year and a half, two years ago, and we dedicated the Lincoln statue down at the Lincoln Depot, and you made that event so special, and here you are again tonight, so thank you for coming here. Well, as we speak, they're predicting a storm, and I remember the last time you had me up here, it was pouring, so right. maybe I should, like, keep you out of the mix <laughs> no, so we have good weather. Never, I don't... never. Always come back. All right. <laughs> Just one more question about this book. Yes. This is a special book, obviously, that you put a lot of research in. Obviously, I read the book, and it's so it's so detailed. Yeah, it's almost a day by day account from when Lincoln was elected to the time he actually was inaugurated, and quite a bit of information in there. You know, I could have done it in a different way. I could have done a chapter on the inauguration, a chapter on the a journey, a chapter on making the cabinet a chapter on putting his family stuff in order. But Lincoln never did one thing at a time. He did everything at the same time. And I, so I decided to do a sort of a blow-by-blow and a day-by-day, as you say, to um, take him from Election Day and reveal the incredible pressures he was under, trying to keep the country together, trying not to allow slavery to spread, and ultimately coming here to Peekskill on that I, journey. I, I, I was going to say that. And yeah. thanks to you and, and um, Governor Pataki and the sculptor and, and Paul Martin and all those people, I got to see the station at right. long last. And it's the same station. So that was a thrill. Yes. And when I wrote about that day, I really felt I knew the area. Yeah. Because there were reports that Lincoln was cheered from the hills around there. Right. And there's a hill right across. And there. if you're standing there, you can yes. feel it. So I appreciate that you opportunity. Really, you really do feel it, and you really can picture it. And what struck me as a, as a former elected official, reading uh, how things were at that time, when Lincoln, in between waiting for his inauguration, first of all, he could walk up and down the street as a normal person. Yeah. People would come up to him. Obviously, he was in the state house in the Springfield on a day-to-day -day basis. Open office hours, yes. yeah. And the fact that anybody could come up to him at any time, say what they wanted. But the other thing that struck me was the... the the day was where you didn't speak at all in between when you were elected and when right. you were inaugurated. You didn't make any speeches. You didn't let your feelings be known. You didn't do anything. You just waited for your inauguration. Well, unlike the recent experience when President-elect Obama held a news conference every day yes. and blogged and, and used the web, Abraham Lincoln maintained four months of what he called masterly inactivity. That was the tradition. And it was frustrating for him, and it was yes. somewhat frustrating for the country, but that was the way it was done then. You had to see Obama with the office of president-elect. President-elect. But, but, but that's, that's the way it is now, I guess. 
it was interesting when he would say, if anybody wants to know what I thought about slavery or anything, just go, read it. go back and right. read the papers. You know what? <laughs> you can push for two months to get, as Obama said, he wants to get hit the ground running, or you can wait for four months. It, and in the end, it doesn't matter. Right. You're there, and it all starts on Inauguration Day, as it has for Obama. Well, I want to thank you for spending the time. I want mayor, to thank you for you'll coming You'll always to be Pigskill. my mayor of Pigskill. Th thank so you very much. And, good uh, to see you. Thank you for everything you do. Thank you. We're here now with the officers of the Lincoln Society. I have Jackie Fitzpatrick, who is the vice president. I have John Curran, who's the president, Tony Cernecki, who is the secretary. Uh, they will all be moving up. John will be moving out this year. And uh, it's, it's a great event so far, and I know you've been working hard to make this come come to fruition and how's things going so far? Things are going well. We had a good turnout and we've even had many people coming up to the door. Uh, we're thrilled with the turnout um, and we're pretty excited about our new our new location. Uh, and we're actually already looking forward to next year. Great and, and John I, I know we had a successful morning and there was a lot of people there and did a good job of in introducing and putting forth information. Uh, what, what's your feelings as you are ending your term as president? Uh, John, what a great question. <laughs> and you have been through this before twice yourself, and I think more or less you would understand even the answer. It's something that you're glad to do, and you're also glad when you're not doing it. I'd say it sort of sums it up. But we're glad that it's being taken more seriously in the wider community, and especially with this uh, 200th anniversary uh, this year of Abraham Lincoln's birth, which we're a part of. I think that makes it a double success. Mm -hmm. And Tony, uh, I know this is a special year, not only for the 200th anniversary, but the Society is giving uh, an initial award, it's its first award. Uh, Mr. Holzer, who is our guest speaker tonight, is receiving that award. Why don't you talk a little bit about that? Well, we're very honored tonight to have a nationally prominent author um, uh, about Lincoln and the Civil War, and that's Harold Holzer, who lives in Westchester County. He is the co-chairman of the U.S. Abraham Lincoln Bicentennial Commission, which is a very prestigious position uh, in the uh, history community. Uh, he's here for a book signing. He's here for a formal presentation to the people gathered here in Peekskill. And it's a great connection to uh, the Peekskill community and Abraham Lincoln. Uh, Harold Holzer is that bridge. And the award he's receiving tonight, he's the, he's the initial uh, re recipient, and why don't you explain that? He is the first recipient of the Lincoln Legacy Award, which is a brand new award developed by the Lincoln Society in Peekskill, and we couldn't think of a, a more appropriate person to get this honor that, uh, than a, uh, a resident of Westchester County who has spent uh, so many years uh, promoting the life and legacy of Abraham Lincoln. It was a great idea, and it's, it's a great night, and you've all done a great job, so thank Thanks. you very much. Thank you. I've left for last, of course, the local story, and that is Lincoln's coming through here. I was privileged to, um, to join Paul and, and John Teston, Governor Pataki, and others when the statue of Lincoln was dedicated at the Peekskill train station, and I'm very grateful for that opportunity because I got to see something I'd never seen. I wrote about it in the book. I got to see the hill above the station where allegedly people, the crowd was so big that there were people up the hill to cheer Abraham Lincoln. Um, I got to benefit from some wonderful newspapers that Paul shared with me with some great stories about the local reaction, both pro and con. In those days, the Republican papers were pro and the Democratic papers uh, thought that Lincoln could do nothing right. Um, just before I got to uh, Peekskill, I think I got the geography right. Is Osning before or after Peekskill? Before. <laughs> it is before, if you're coming from the north. After. After he left, because I want to end with Peekskill. As his train goes by, prisoners were standing on the roof of the prison waving to him wearing striped uniforms. I think it's a very 1930s picture of, uh, of prisoners, even prisoners greeting Lincoln. But of course he gets here, and as you all know better than I, he stands on a, a little, you know, one of those sidecars near the station. And he says, memorably, one of the 101 speeches he gives um, on the road, I will say in a single sentence in regard to the difficulties that lie before me in our beloved country, that if I could only be as generously and unanimously sustained as the demonstrations I have witnessed indicate I shall be, 
I shall not fail. <coughs> but without your sustaining hands, I am sure that neither I nor any other man can hope to succeed. I trust that in the course I shall pursue, I shall be sustained, not only by the party that elected me, but by the patriotic people of the whole country. That was his message. It wasn't heeded, but it was a message that from every public opinion survey we read, people want to see replicated today. This bicentennial has been extraordinary. It's going to continue with conferences and television programs, maybe the film, um, speeches, events all over the country, local events. Um, I think it's useful not only that we remembered um, the 1960s, but that we remember 1909 in this year. Not only because it was uh, the Lincoln centennial year in the era of the most books ever published about Abraham Lincoln, but because it was the, the founding of the NAACP, which of course was in a way inspired by one of the great shames in the history of Lincoln Springfield. The race riots that plagued that city, Lincoln City, in late 1908, out of which sprung the idea for the NAACP. It's a reminder that Lincoln's legacy is powerful, but it's tenuous, and that our responsibility is to fight for it every day. With that in mind, I just want to um, leave a small token here. Um, at the Lincoln Memorial ceremony that um, I attended to launch the bicentennial with Senator Durbin and others on February, on the very early morning of February 12th, um, the head of the U.S. Mint gave me the first roll of the new Lincoln pennies. And I was able to give one to President, the first one to President Obama, who put it in his pocket. And I think, as Lincoln would say, it would be altogether fitting and proper that I give one of the last ones from that roll um, in solidarity with Lincoln and his lessons to Robert Spencer. So as the night is ending and we have another annual event of the Lincoln Society coming to a close, hopefully that you have a better understanding of how important it is to portray and remember and commemorate the history of this area, Peekskill, Cortland, Yorktown area, northern Westchester, everything that happened here. It was great to see the, the weather cooperate again this year for a great event in the morning with uh, the speakers and the procession with uh, Abraham Lincoln himself. And tonight was a great night with all the speakers and uh, especially with Harold Holzer being here and really adding to the event. So hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, we'll see you again in the next On Topic show. And again, you can watch all On Topic shows online at ontopicwithjt.com. So we look forward to you in our next show. Thank you.